Want to see a cool doll? Huh? Just kidding. We'll talk about her another day. So I got a brand new kind of American Girl of Today number four. Number four is super popular for a very good reason. She is one of the cutest dolls they've ever made and they only ever made one with this face sculpt and that's her. So she's super popular even though she's not that hard to find, right? I, I think any given day on eBay one, at least one goes up for sale. So they aren't too terribly difficult to find but they are still very popular. So you're probably gonna find yourself spending a couple hundred bucks on one, not even in amazing shape. It can still be kind of hard to get these even though I would venture to say they made hundreds of thousands of them but it is extremely difficult to find one with the original box from 1995 which is the first year that they were released so what a great day for my doll collection that I get to add a first edition mint condition American Girl of today number four to my collection so let's take her out of the box and have a look at her all right, so this was an impromptu purchase because I already had a number four in my collection already. And I'm pretty sure she was a 1995 because the earliest ones from like the first couple of years don't have a ton of face paint and, or like some people call it makeup, but it's really just lip and cheek color. And so that's usually how you can identify a very early number four. So I have a very early number four in my collection already who has silver eye. Actually, I'll show you. She's right here. I took her shoes off to give to somebody else, apparently. But this is my current number four in my collection. And I am not even anywhere near close to the camera today because we're trying out new lighting. And I can't get close enough to the camera to show her to you without her going in complete shadow. So I'll do some B-roll so we can have a better look at her. But I absolutely love this doll. She's actually one of my favorites in my collection anyway. But I just could not resist the temptation of getting... A basically brand new one so she will probably stay with me but she does have silver eye her hair isn't in perfectly mint condition either so you know I thought like when I saw this one come up like this is really more of a collector quality doll so I went ahead and purchased her so anyway yeah I already had one but of course I bought another one what'd you expect me to do so yeah I was just minding my own business on eBay before bed because I'm still a lunatic that checks eBay all the time and this doll showed up uh uh, really right around my bedtime which these days is about 10 to 11 p.m. so you know that's what middle age is you're <laughs> I used to stay up at all hours of the night but these days like if I stay up past 12 my day is ruined the next day so um, anyway I guess I probably should show you a little bit closer her box because this is a first edition box which is really cool they had them like this for the first couple of years so the first two versions of the American Girl of today line actually have the same box and the dolls pretty much are the same. They just changed the meat outfit. I believe it was in 1996. So I think this meat outfit was only made for about 12 months if I had to guess, but the boxes are the same. So if you buy one um, with the first, I think it's called the first day outfit. It's that iconic one with the sort of, um, I, I think it's made out of felt or some, I don't know. It feels like felt to me, but it's like cut with pinking shears and it's color blocked and the main color is yellow. Very, very, very cool outfit. Um, um, so I know that it's popular and it's one of the early ones. So if you get one of those dolls, it's pretty much the same as the first editions from 1995, including like all the packaging and everything. So, but again, you know me, I love stuff from the very, very first release. So, you know, I had to have this version. So let's see if I can kind of give you a good look at this box. Again, my lights are like, I'm reaching past the light so you can't see her super well. But um, yeah, a first edition box, which is so hard to find well i shouldn't say so hard to find these days at any given point you can find one of the more common ones in these boxes on ebay and i'm gradually trying to scoop them up because i think i've decided at this point <laughs> that i basically want the entire first 20 american girls of today in their original boxes all the original packaging original meat outfit you know just basically as new and pristine from pleasant company as possible i've just really fallen in love with this line lately and so i've gradually been picking things up i just got a number 20 in very similar condition actually i think better condition uh, a couple weeks ago it's just been really really fun to kind of dive into this line because again my 1980s pleasant company collection is pretty much complete at this point so other than just like upgrading a few things, I'm not really like actively seeking out so much stuff from like Molly, Samantha, and Kirsten. So it's really been fun to kind of dive into the 90s, especially with the fashion with these dolls. I mean, I love the dolls, but the fashions are so cool because 
even though I never really knew about this line as a child. Oh, let me show you her in her box, actually, without taking her out. So she's obviously been taken out, but I mean, what a cool sight to see, like a number four, brand new, kind of, <laughs> again, kind of, in the box. It, I don't know, there's just something about the look of a doll still in her box that kind of, I, I don't know if it's nostalgic or what, but just the idea that like she's brand new and, you know, it's kind of like she was always mine in a way, even though she's been taken out, I can tell. She's possibly been undressed and redressed and stuff, but I don't know, just something about the look of a doll still stuck in the box. I don't know. It's just is nice to kind of like free them and kind of feel like you're the first owner of them. So yeah, anyway, the fashions from this line I love so so much because you know these dolls weren't historical i mean they're historical now i guess but you know we're not talking like edwardian orphans from the early 1900s these were meant to be designed after the girls of today which you know as of 1995 which Oh gosh, that was almost 30 years ago. So, you know, this is nostalgic to me. You know, this is what my school teachers wore in elementary school. So anyway, I am absolutely in love with number four, as is just about every other American girl collector because she's just so unique looking right and they didn't make any other dolls with this face sculpt she really is a special doll to have in your collection and i think most people that collect anything that's not historical tend to want to have her in her collect in their collections and that's why i think it's just so hard to get one of these for a good deal because she's pretty much a staple in people's american girl collections and again they didn't reuse this mold a hundred thousand times like the classic mold or josefina so if you want this face sculpt you have to get a number four so anyway this is my true first edition number four now she came with her original meat accessories so um i don't know if they're completely complete i think she is she might be missing a dollar or something in this bag but you know i don't plan on ever opening it she comes with this really cute sunflower embellished hat which is so blossom right like so Again, I just love it. Oh, she's got her original necklace, which can be kind of hard to find. And she has the original shoes that are the like fuzzy kind of velvet shoes. Fun fact, ooh, she's shedding a little bit still. I'm just gonna say that that's a sign that she's new because new dolls typically kind of shed some. But yeah, fun fact, some of these dolls were actually shipped with the Mary Janes from Samantha and Molly's meat outfits. And I wanna guess that it's because, I think they sent out a letter saying that the velvet shoes didn't meet their like standard of quality. And I'm gonna guess it's because the shoes were doing, uh, like putting dye transfer on the doll's feet because I have seen a lot of first edition girls of today with black marks all over their feet, presumably from the meat shoes. So I'm gonna guess that that's why they swapped out the shoes for a while to kind of figure out the dye transfer issue, but I'll show you what they look like with the Mary Janes. So this is my stunningly gorgeous American Girl of Today number two, and she has Molly and Samantha's Meet Mary Janes. And honestly, I really kind of like these more, so it really doesn't matter to me which version of this doll I get. You know, it, whether she's got this shoe or the velvet shoe, I actually kind of prefer this, even though the intended design was the velvet one. I still really like these, and it's kind of tempting to just go ahead and put everybody in these just to be sure nobody gets any black marks on their feet. But yeah, again, if you wanted to have a look, this is my perfectly adorable American Girl of Today number two with the roundest face you've ever seen, and that's my favorite style of classic mold for these dolls. Oh, I just love her. So yeah, number four has really amazing hair, and again, it looks like it's never even been brushed in a good way, right? Like sometimes it's like, girl, you need to run a comb through that hair, but um, her hair looks like it's in excellent shape with no short pieces or any like blunt or dry ends on it. Again, a really, really amazing quality for a number four from the first year. Again, 1995, almost 30 years ago. This is such an amazing shape for this doll. And I feel like I got her for a pretty good deal. It was a couple hundred less than the last one I'd seen go for sale. So I'm really, really happy. I think the only thing she's missing is her scrunchie. And I can hunt one of those down, even though they get kind of pricey. I think a lot of times it costs like 10 to 14 bucks just to buy the scrunchie. And honestly, I'm going to leave her hair down. So I don't really care that much. But 
one of these days I'll hunt one down and probably put it on her wrist. But yeah, she also came with some of the books, which I haven't looked at closely yet, but let's have a look at it really quick since we're looking at all of the original stuff. So we have the obligatory mini grin pens, which are basically just embossed stickers that were meant to look like little one inch buttons, but obviously doll scale. So a lot of times you'll see that this denim vest that the doll comes in, they'll often have these stuck all over them. And I usually just kind of leave them because I feel like they're going to leave a residue if I take them off. But yeah, just about everything that they sold in the 90s for the American Girl of Today line came with these little stickers. So these are everywhere, <laughs> including the one that just fell out of the book set that I took out of the box. So this doll appears to have all of her original books. So I think I went through this in my unboxing of number 15 and boy, do I have a gorgeous first edition number 15. Be sure to watch that video. I might, if I can remember, I'll put a link to that video in the end, but my 15 also came with these original books. So the concept of the American Girl of today originally was basically supposed to be a riff on the historical dolls, but you were basically you know, the child was meant to write their own version of history. So um, I think the main intent was to like get a doll that looked like the child and, you know, she could write her own story basically um, to tell her own story, right? So um, I think ultimately American Girl sort of shifted away from it being like a doll that was intended to look like the child versus, you know, you could get one and it doesn't necessarily have to look like you and you could come up with your own story for it as well. But I do think the original intent of these was for like a young girl to tell her own story in the same format that like the original historical dolls did. So these books are completely fresh, blank, no writing or anything in them, which is amazing. So I think they came shrink wrapped if I had to guess, which is why there is like this weird card on the front. So like if we look here, we've got this like stack of books and it's got this thing um, that just says American Girl of Today. You know this American Girl, she's just like you. A genuine, one of a kind, original with her own story to tell. Her adventures are your adventures. Her dreams are your dreams. This is her moment in history and your moment too. The best moment of all for American girls to shine. So yeah, this was sort of like the cover letter, I guess, for this thing. And we've got, um, you know, sort of basically um, an outline of what you're supposed to do with these books. And weirdly, I actually forgot it came with this, but it basically came with like a writer's guide because this says like, how to write an American Girl's story. So it basically walks you through each of the books that you're supposed to write, which again, I feel like this shows how short people's, including children's attention span has gotten over the years because I cannot imagine a nine-year-old doing all this. This seems like homework, honestly. So, but anyway, so we have like meet blank. We have blank learns a lesson, blank surprise, Happy birthday, blank. I feel like I'm writing Jerry Blank's story. <laughs> blank saves the day and changes for blank. So that is the like original six book story structure, um, like the original historical girls had. So interestingly, this actually comes with a writer's guide for each of these books. So it basically I feel like was intended to help the, um, the child just basically yeah, I, just to look through it here, it's basically sort of like a workbook almost that you would sit down and basically fill all of this information out. And then I'm guessing it basically just says, okay, now that you've done that, now turn it into essay form in this book. So yeah, very, very cool. And all six of these are here. I just think this is so fun. And again, considering that these are all in mint condition and unwritten in, this is so great for like a collector's collection. <laughs> the final piece that came with this is actually one of my favorite accessories that came with these dolls. And it's this little stencil that was basically, I don't know if you can see it super well on camera. Let me put it behind something white. So if you look here, it's basically a stencil that you can use so that all of your books kind of have like a neater cover on them so like if we look here so where it says like meet blank you could come in and so if your doll's name was like i don't know shoebox you could go in and write like the you could trace the letters out for each um a character in her name so you have like a really 
nice, consistent looking, um, you know, cover. So I guess you were meant to also like draw an illustration on here, which I would love to see uh, what like nine year olds ended up drawing for these because you know there were some funny ones. But yeah, it looks like it's the same font as like the, yeah, so if you look here, the M for meat is like, it obviously lines up with this stencil. So yeah, this was basically to just match the font for the story. Um, title so like me learns a lesson whatever it was all done in the same font and again this is just such a cool little thing I actually think it might even still have like I don't want to mess it up but it feels like it has like the original coating on it too that you're supposed to peel off um, and again me as a child if I was lucky enough to get one of these you know I would never have like taken well I might have written the story, but there is no way in hell that I would have like messed up this book. Like this, you know, again, even as a nine year old, I would have gotten this and like been too scared to touch it or mess it up. So um, I'm guessing the kid that got this doll either didn't like dolls at all or was like me and was just like, I need to keep this thing perfect because it's such a special gift. But yeah, I just think that this is such a fun piece to have with this doll is this little, um, again, stencil just to do the font. And it's got the American Girl Today logo in it which is like extra cool so yeah this was pretty much complete again i think the only thing i'm missing is that tiny little scrunchie for this doll but again all in all like a really really great piece of preserved pleasant company history she even has her little hand tag i think she's missing her hair care tag but again those are kind of easy to hunt down because i think they used the same ones for the historical dolls as they did the girls of today so not uh, too much missing. I think I can find those other two pieces just to really make this thing look mint condition. So yeah, I'm really, really excited. Again, this doll is in near pristine condition. Her limbs are pretty tight. And again, no silver eye, which was pretty common for American Girl of Today number four. I feel like a lot of the earliest ones I see have silver eye, including my original one. Let's grab her again. So yeah, super common to have silver eye in these early dolls. So again, I feel like this doll was probably stored pretty carefully over the last almost 30 years. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to have her. But yeah, one of the most amazing things about Pleasant Company dolls, I, the thing that I love most about them and kind of hate also because it makes collecting and like selling really difficult is every single one looks different. I mean, these dolls were probably made within like 12, maybe to 24 months of each other. But even if they came out of the same batch, their faces look so different you know it's a lot of times it's subtle things but you know they're realistic enough that you know even like just subtle changes in the way these things like their heads came out of the molds you know and the way the vinyl set as it was cooling they all just look a little bit different so that's why it's so hard to like get a new doll like this and then just kick this one to the curb because She's not exactly the same as this one, even though, again, they're basically similar editions. So that makes it so difficult to sell something, even though, like, it's technically an upgrade. I still really love this doll and will probably keep her. So, yeah, again, it's sort of the fun part about collecting Pleasant Company, but it's also, like... The most difficult part because it's so hard to sell them because you know if you collect barbie for instance if you get a better version of the barbie you can just sell the old one because it looks exactly the same but again these just have such subtle variations that every single one looks different so yeah i hope you enjoyed today's video i know it was a little on the short side but i wasn't planning to make it because i wasn't planning to buy this doll so um yeah if you have number four i'm very curious but i'm also curious if there is anybody in the collector community that doesn't have number four and doesn't want her because I have never met anybody that collects well, I guess I would say if you only collect historical dolls, that doesn't count. But if you collect Truly Me, American Girl Today, all those types of dolls, if you don't want number four, I want to hear from you and I want to know why. Because this is like one of the coolest dolls they've ever made. And I've, again, never spoken to anyone that isn't dying to have this doll in their collection. Be sure to check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash idreamofjohnny where you can get hours and hours of extra content that you can't get anywhere else on the internet. It's the best thing you can do to help support my channel so I can keep making videos. Be sure to check out my online shop at idreamofjohnny.com where you can get awesome merch. A lot of it is inspired by Pleasant Company, so be sure to check it out. I'm adding new stuff all the time. If you want to keep hanging out, you can watch this video where I unbox a brand new pristine American Girl Today number 15. I think she might be the prettiest number 15 I've ever seen in my entire life, so be sure to check it out if you haven't seen it already. And if you've seen that one, maybe you haven't seen this one. So be sure to check it out so we can keep hanging out. All right, that's all for today, but I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.